Talk to me about the COVID inquiry. Why would the government take its own inquiry to court in a case that it's almost certainly going to lose? Uh, well, the Cabinet Office is, is leading on that and wants to clarify the legal position uh, in terms of what uh, messages uh, are disclosed. Obviously, there are uh, issues in terms of people's sort of privacy and, and their wider rights in terms of what message may be sent. But anything to do with the inquiry, I think there's a recognition we hugely value inquiry, as you say, we have set up Why as a government. Court, well, we have set up the inquiry. We massively value uh, Why its take work. It to court, then? Well, the Cabinet Office wants to just clarify uh, the legal position about what is in Don't scope. Don't you trust the chair to do that? Well, of course we trust it. But well, it's why a perfectly, take it to court, well, then? The Cabinet Office wants to just clarify the legal position around the messages and what is and is not uh, in scope. Uh, but the, the work of the inquiry is massively important. That's why uh, we've set it up and, and people do are very much looking them? forward to it. Of course we, we so trust. So why uh, take we, it to court? We have a fantastic judiciary, uh, world-leading judiciary uh, Seems in this like a country. Waste but it's, it's perfectly waste reasonable. Waste of taxpayers' money. No, I think the, the Common Office wants to just clarify uh, the legal scope in terms of what is. It's a, an innovative area uh, to test, and, and, and that's something the Common Office wants to clarify. I, I'm reminded of Boris Johnson standing outside Downing Street when he became a Prime Minister, what we're we talking about, like four years ago? And he said, I've got a plan for social care, the Conservatives are going to fix it. And here we are, 165,000 vacancies, uh, millions of hours of, of, of care needs not being met every, every year and still no full plan. Lots of little ideas, but not one big solution. Well, there's, there's, there isn't one single answer. There's a whole range of things uh, we're doing. But, you know, people can't have it both ways. For example, we added social care to the shortage occupation list to, to attract more people internationally uh, to help to address uh, some of the challenges in, in vacancy. We had the announcement, as I say, in April, the extra 250 million going in to look at uh, professional qualifications. But and your critics say it's not enough, there, that that's not the working. Investment we had the investment in the autumn statement up to £7.5 billion uh, pounds as a centrepiece in terms of that commitment to better integrating health and social care. So there is a package of measures. It's like you've just come into government. You've been there for 13 years and we have the longest NHS waiting, time, waiting times and the, well, the longest waiting lists since records began. I mean, you know, that, that is not something you can possibly be proud of or by, you know, you're saying, well, we're doing a little bit here and we're doing a little bit there. They've got to the record numbers on your watch. Well, we've had a, a pandemic that's had a massive consequence. And if you look yeah. at, say, for example, people... But we didn't start people... at waiting lists of zero. We started before the pandemic of waiting lists of 4.6 million people. I see that you also de de um, disclosed, forgive me, to MPs that the NHS in England had missed its target to ensure that all patients who'd been waiting 18 months for an operation in hospital would be treated by April. What's going on? Well, we cut it by over 90%. Uh, I you think that's a huge... Target, though, didn't you? Well, we cut it by over 90%. We got it to under 11,000 by uh, the end of March. If you look at that compared to, for example, Wales, where it was around 70,000 patients waiting 18 months in labour-run Wales, and we've got a population in England 18 times the size of Wales. So a huge amount of progress was made uh, over target, 90... Though. Well, by a very, very narrow margin. We got it down by over 90%, and that's thanks to a huge amount of work being done up and down the country by surgical, surgical teams. So we've got the uh, recovery plan, the elective recovery plan. We're rolling out the diagnostic centres. We've got over uh, 160 that we're opening. We've got new surgical hubs that we're opening to boost our capacity. We know there's a backlog from the pandemic. We cleared almost all the 78-week waits by the end of March. There was, as I say, just under 11,000 uh, left, which we're focused on, but it shows the plan is working. We cleared the two-year waits in the summer, got that below 2,000. We cleared over 90% by the end of March, okay. and now we're focusing on those over 52 weeks. There's still a big number that you're going to have to sort out before the next election. 7.2 million people are still on the waiting list. That's a big number. Well, it is. And, uh, of course, not all of those are waiting for inpatients. About four-fifths of those are waiting for outpatient appointments. About a fifth are for inpatients. But it is. It's a consequence of the pandemic. All health systems are facing real challenges in terms of those uh, backlogs. The lockdown was supposed those. to save the NHS. You're now saying that the lockdown has had a massive impact on the NHS. It's damaged the NHS. It's led to more people waiting for an operation or a referral in the NHS. Well, I think there's two different things. The lockdown was about tackling COVID, 
which was the, the burning platform that the country uh, was facing. And uh, other health systems around... It was to protect around... the NHS. That was the literally other... your slogan. Uh, it, and it, indeed, in terms of the pressure of COVID, and we saw uh, one of the, the, the big impacts we've had in terms of inpatients into hospital has been how many of those patients have COVID. So it puts huge pressure on the NHS. But there has been a consequence in terms of the backlogs, not just in England. That's something that is being faced across the UK, but also across the globe. This time next week, next Wednesday, another strike, another big strike by the, the BMA, uh, who are saying there could be more industrial action throughout the summer. Are you making any progress in solving this dispute? Well, we had three weeks of talks with the junior doctors and the government set out a, a fair offer. I, I don't think uh, the junior doctors refusing to move from their demand for 35% pay rise is a reasonable one. Uh, it's not the sort of pay rise that most of your viewers, I'm sure, themselves are receiving. Uh, so I don't think 35% is reasonable. We hugely value the work that our junior doctors do, uh, the pressures that they've been under from the pandemic, the wider pressures that the NHS has been under. So we massively value the work of the junior doctors, but I don't think a 35% pay, pay rise is a reasonable demand. Uh, What's reasonable then? What would be reasonable? To move from that, uh, and, and that's really what we need to see some movement on. What would be reasonable? What would you be prepared to move on? Well, I'm not going to negotiate, uh, and you wouldn't expect me to, uh, in public. When was the last time you met representatives for junior doctors and nurses? Uh, a couple of weeks ago, we've had uh, we had three weeks of, of talks with the junior doctors. Uh, I don't not think going a, well, an offer, though, is it? but I don't think an offer of 35% uh, for a pay rise is what uh, your viewers. Uh, would be receiving themselves. I don't but you think need that's... them on side for these numbers to come down, don't We you? do, and, and that's why we're keen to work with them. We've had talks over uh, a series of weeks uh, with them. I think we need to have a, a fair... Are you? Well, I don't think 35% uh, as a pay rise is a reasonable ask uh, of the so junior So you're still a doctors. long way apart. So there is a, a distance uh, apart. The government made them uh, an offer. We want to work constructively uh, with them. We hugely value the contribution that junior doctors make, and we recognise the, the real pressures that they've faced uh, as a consequence of the pandemic, but also the pressures that the wider NHS is under. OK. Um, as I said, you're still a, a, well, you said uh, you're still a distance apart. What would you give them? How much would you give them? I'm not going to negotiate live on air, Kay, and I don't think you would uh, expect me ah, to do so. I'm going to ask you. <laughs> <laughs> Perfectly reasonable to ask, but equally reasonable for me to say that that's not something we're going to do uh, live uh, on air.